Hello, hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. All right, we will jump right on in. Um, so excited to have you all joining us this lovely Wednesday. Just as a reminder, welcome to Lunch Bites. Uh, and before we kick off, we'll talk about our code of conduct as we always do. So in today's episode, we just wanna remind everyone to be aware of others, be welcoming and respectful, be patient and friendly, be open to all questions and viewpoints, especially in the chat, and be kind and considerate of others and understanding of each other's dis um, differences. If you'd like more information, please go check out our code of conduct over at Microsoft, the aka.ms slash events. C O C. All right. Another thing to note is that this um, show is available live with captions on Learn TV and on YouTube, and you can select that option below for captions to be played um, if you need it. So I'm Steph Rogers. I'm one of the developer audience uh, product marketing managers over here in the UK, um, aligned to the Azure Group, and um, I'm here with my fabulous team um, to kick it off. Ty, do you want to go first? Sure. Thanks, Annika. Hi, everyone. I'm Ty Brennan. I'm one of the cloud solution architects at Microsoft UK. So I sit within our digital and app innovation technology area. So this means I cover all things sort of our app platform, uh, things like serverless technologies, in particular, things like API management, logic apps, and our DevOps process as well. So lovely to be here. And Annika, I'll hand over to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Annika. I am a little bit like Ty, but um, a specialist side. So um cover all the same things, but just a first point of contact for you guys. Um, just an introduction to these technologies. And just a reminder what Lunch Bites is. If you haven't joined us before, um, Lunch Bites is a new show that we do every two weeks. Um, we focus on different topics that you submit. So anything that you'd like questions answered on, we will bring our technical experts from across our Cloud Solution Architect team, our MVPs, our most valuable professional teams, and beyond to answer your questions about Azure. So if you have a suggestion for a Lunch Bites topic, please submit it um, to us. We have an email at the end, or you can let your account team know, and we'll be able to feature it. Turning over to you, Doug. Great, thanks, Steph. So, as with the, the current fashion of lunch bites, we're jumping straight into the content to deliver that straight to you. So, this week, we've actually got Pathic with us, who's going to be talking about using Terraform with Azure DevOps. So, Pathic, I've brought you onto the screen. I'm really looking forward to this session. We've not actually done too much infrastructure as code sessions in the past. We have done a DevOps for, for Logic Apps session, but do you want to give a quick intro to yourself and what you do at Microsoft first? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jake. Um, so my name is Pratik. I'm working as a cloud solution architect. Um, I'm in the same team as Jake uh, and Anika. Um, I'm specialized on app innovation and part of data and AI. Uh, uh, Terraform is my favorite, um, and the overall DevOps uh, is my favorite subject. It has been my favorite subject since long, and I definitely want to talk about it and uh, kind of um, ensure that you learn some good things today. So I'm talking about uh, Terraform with Azure DevOps today. So, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, so yeah, really excited for this session. So for all the viewers who are watching uh, live right now, please do put your, your questions and messages into the chat. We will get to those throughout the session and we've got a dedicated Q&A time as well at the end of the session. So Pathik, I'm gonna bring up your slides right now and the floor is all yours. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let's get started. Um, let's get started with the Terraform with Azure DevOps. Um, let's look at the agenda first uh, for today's session. Uh, first, we are going to start with slightly a briefly understanding about what is Azure DevOps and what is a DevOps. Uh, then we will move into looking into the Terraform. So we'll look at uh, uh, what is Terraform, how does Terraform work, what are the core concept of Terraform. Uh, I'll be deep diving into uh, those core concept. We'll also look at the life cycle of Terraform. Um, at the end, I'm going to show you a cool demo, uh, which is using Terraform with Azure DevOps, deploying a modernized app on, on the Azure cloud. Um, so yeah, it will be an interesting demo. So let's get started with the, with the overview of Azure DevOps. So what is DevOps? So DevOps is nothing but it's a set of tools, practices, people, and culture, which enables 
or which automates a continuous deployment of your product. So it, it actually automates your product life cycle where you can deploy your product to the production very quickly. Uh, DevOps combines two major teams in the product life cycle, development team and an operational team. They both, they both work together to deliver the continuous delivery. A continuous delivery is a process where you actually take your product to the production quickly by using those six phases. So developer team, they will start working on plan and tracking. Then they start development. After they do the development, they do uh, test quickly, build and test quickly. They deploy it to the production. And the operational team will do the operation part of the uh, product development. And also they will do the monitoring and learning. Uh, the operational team will feedback uh, uh, to the development team for any improvement. So with Azure DevOps, what do you get? You get speed delivery, so you can quickly deploy or speedily deploy your code into the production. Uh, you get continuous feedback from the operational team to improvise on your product. Um, and also you're automating everything here. So there is no manual intervention. Yeah, so moving to the next slide. Now, what is Azure DevOps? So Azure DevOps provides those services where you can implement your DevOps so we can implement your CI CD pipeline. The five major component of uh, Azure DevOps are Azure boards, Azure pipelines, Azure repository, Azure test plan, and Azure artifacts. Uh, Azure board is nothing but it delivers um, uh, users a faster, um, agile tools. For example, if you want to do the planning, if you want to do the tracking, and you want to discuss about your um, your project plan, or you want to discuss about the requirement, you do it on Azure board. Azure pipeline is used to build, test, and deploy CI CD uh, with uh, any language. Right? With Azure pipeline, you can use Terraform, you can use Bicep, you can use any other infrastructure as a code um, language. Um, it is a platform where it, and it is basically uh, multi-cloud. You can, again, with Azure DevOps, you can deploy it to um, any other cloud. Azure rep uh, repository, uh, you get unlimited cloud-hosted private uh, Git repository. And also you can collaborate with the build for better code. And also you use uh, the full uh, repository features, for example, pull request and advanced file management. As your test plan, your test team can actually test and ship with confidence using manual and automated testing. And with Azure Artifacts, you can store all your packages uh, for your team into Azure Art Artifacts, which can be shared with the other teams as well. Okay, so now let's move into our hot topic today. Um, what exactly a Terraform? So Terraform is basically an infrastructure as a code uh, using a declarative language. It is multi-cloud, which means you can use, it is multi-cloud and hybrid, which means you can use uh, Terraform to deploy your resources to any public cloud, as well as your private cloud plus on-prem. So it is very powerful in terms of multi-cloud and hybrid. It is human readable configuration language. When you look at the Terraform code, it is really human readable. You don't see a complexity in, in the code. Um, like, uh, so it's very, very easy to understand, very easy to write. And it introduces uh, state management. So all your resources are tracked with states. Uh, it stores the state file either locally or you can also store remotely on uh, as your storage account, for example. So the state files are very powerful and it tracks your resources. And we are going to see how exactly it does. Um, so. For example, um, if you have deployed some resources to Azure and uh, let's say your team member goes into the resource uh, in the uh, power, uh, Azure portal and if they delete uh, any resource, uh, the Terraform will be able to uh, track those changes and it can redeploy your resource. Uh, we'll look into that. Um, how does it work? I mean, Terraform 
um, as infrastructure as a code, um, it works with the provider. So Terraform um, has 100 and 1700 providers available. So for example, Azure, Azure RM, Azure Resource Manager is one provider. So Azure uh, Terraform works with the Terraform providers, for example, uh, Azure RM, AWS, Google Cloud, and many more, right? And it targets the API of the, the, the platform, for example, Azure. So using the provider, uh, it targets the API to deploy resources to, uh, to the cloud. Yeah, moving to the next slide. Now, a deep dive, a little bit more deep dive into how Terraform, uh, Terraform is designed and how does it work. Um, so the Terraform has got um, uh, three more main phases. So number one phase is uh, you write the code. For example, you use some editor, let's say Visual Studio Code, um, you write the code. Um, then after you write the code, uh, you can initiate the Terraform plan. The Terraform plan is nothing but uh, before you apply, you can look at the execution plan uh, of the Terraform, uh, which means before you deploy, you would know what exactly uh, uh, the, the deployment would, will look like. For example, how many resources it will create, how many resources is going to delete, how many resources it's going to update. So that's the plan. And the, the plan stage is very, very powerful. Um, the state files are created during the plan. So there's a very simple command called Terraform space plan, um, which is basically will create your execution plan. The next stage is apply. And that's where the actual resources um, will, be get, will be created. So after your plan is successful, um, uh, you can apply your plan uh, to the target uh, provider. Uh, and when you apply, uh, when you run your apply command, Terraform apply command, uh, it will actually deploy resources to the uh, to the to the cloud. Uh, so you can see here resources deployed uh, being deployed, and you have uh, the provider. For example, Azure Cloud is one provider here. Yeah. Um, with plan and apply, uh, the biggest benefit of plan is you know what you're going to do. And during the plan, you can also do validate. You can run Terraform validate command to ensure that the code which you have written to create the resources is, is perfectly fine. It checks with the, uh, with the, it starts checking whether there is a, any syntax error, whether there is a, any configuration error, whether there is any uh, resource um, uh, setting error. So it can check everything for you uh, during your plan, which is the beauty of uh, Terraform. Uh, you can run Terraform locally. For example, developer can uh, run Terraform local um, locally before they uh, check in the code, before they raise the PR uh, to the GitHub repository. So which is again, and we'll see that today. Um, in the demo, I'm going to show you um, actually all the phases of uh, the Terraform, uh, the, the, uh, the initialization, the validate, plan, and apply, right? So we'll see that. OK, a uh, little bit deep dive into the structure of uh, Terraform configuration file, right? It's very simple. Um, mainly, you get five different types of file, but you can use uh, more file as you want. Uh, but looking at the main structure, uh, the number one is provider.tf. The provider.tf um, is used to declare which provider are you targeting, whether it is Azure or any other cloud. So provider will have detail about your target um, platform. Uh, the version.tf, you will have to use version.tf to uh, specify which version of the target um, uh, provider you're going to use. And also you need to define the version of the Terraform. The current version is 1.22, I believe. Yeah, so you can check uh, on the on the website what exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the link, but version will specify, you have to specify the version of the target provider as well as the version of the Terraform. Uh, the Three different files, the variable, Terraform, uh, TFverse, and output are mainly to define the resources. 
right? Uh, the variable dot TF is used to declare your variables, which can be used in your pipeline or which can be used in your other uh, Terraform code. Uh, the terraform.tf wires is used to define the value for those variables, right? Uh, for example, if you want to deploy your code to two different environment, uh, development and test, uh, you can have two different terraform.tf wire files. Yeah. Um, and the output.tf file is used to uh, get the output from the resources. For example, when you deploy a virtual uh, uh, virtual private cloud and you want to get the ID, VNet ID of that, you can use output.tf um, file. Uh, if you look at the screenshot here, um, this is a typical structure of a Terraform um, uh, configuration files. Um, the root folder, the, the root folder files, you can have a look at it. You will have main.tf, you have provided.tf, uh, TF bars, then um, variable.tf and version.tf. Now, for example, if you want to separate out each module into different uh, variable files, you could do that as well. So in my case, I'm using two variable.tf. One is variable-keywall.tf and second is variable.tf. So what does it mean? I mean, if, if you have, if your uh, variable.tf file is getting bigger and bigger and lengthy, you can divide them into uh, sub uh, uh, sub files and that would help you uh, design uh, the more declarative language uh, code right so now um, uh, if you look at um, the other folder here and on the top uh, there is a folder called modules now um, you can design modules within your terraform so modules are like sub function um, basically to re, uh, the structure your code very well. Um, in my case, I have got four modules. Um, I want to deploy a key vault. I want to deploy a networking, which is VPC. I want to deploy a database Postgres, and I want to deploy a web app. So you can define those resources in individual modules, right? Um, there is, um, a, a, I mean, we can have another session on the module, which is basically how to use module with the Terraform, but this is what the basic I'm just talking about. You can go and uh, look at the module uh, documentation in more detail, but yeah. Uh, in my demo, I'm going to show you the module so you will understand how modules can be used. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving to the next slide. I was talking about the state files, right? Um, and state files are very, very important. It's a key concept of Terraform. Uh, the state files are nothing but they are JSON files, uh, which are which can be stored locally, or it can be stored remotely. For example, um, in uh, Azure, you can store them in a storage container. Uh, now, uh, the state file, um, when you run Terraform plan uh, with the provider, uh, the state file will be created. So, for example, you have all your configuration file um, in, uh, in in the diagram. You can see a provider uh, using a provider. You you have created some configuration file, um, and when you run Terraform commands, uh, it is going to create um, states, or it's going to create state files in the JSON format. Um, and again, when you run your Terraform uh, command, you can target where you want to deploy. For example, you want to deploy to dev, test, or prod. Uh, for each environment, you will have different state file, which can be stored. And you can name it like dev.tf state, test.tf state, and uh, prod.tf state. In our demo, I'm going to show you the structure of the TF state. You don't have to worry about it. You don't, you don't look at, you can look at it. You don't work with the state file directly. That is internally, uh, those files are used internally within Terraform, but you can always look at it. It is pure JSON file, uh, which uh, consists of all the resources, which is going to create. So very important uh, state file. Um, Sometimes uh, it becomes very um, complicated when you work with the state file. Uh, but um, if you if you work um, on the state file with the good structure uh, planning, uh, you can really take good benefit of those state files. Okay, moving to the next slide. Now, this is the sample architecture um, I'm going to use today for the demo, right? Um, so using Terraform, 
uh, we're going to deploy a virtual uh, private cloud uh, with two subnet. Uh, it will be on Azure and with two subnet, a public subnet and private subnet. Uh, on the public subnet, uh, we will deploy uh, a app, an app service uh, with app service plan. Uh, and on the private subnet, we're going to deploy um, an um, Azure database, uh, Postgres, Postgres SQL database on the Azure. Yeah, um, we'll also create uh, a private endpoint for the Postgres so that only app service can communicate with the Postgres. Postgres will be locked, um, locked, uh, uh, locked down. It won't be accessible publicly uh, and it will be accessible only through the app service. Uh, since it is in private subnet and and this is the structure this is the typical architecture we follow uh, to deploy our um, our um, uh, serverless applications i'm also going to deploy a key vault um, the key vault will be used to uh, store um, the secrets and the keys uh, for example um, uh, the app service will use um, a Postgres database username and password, and that username and password we're going to store it in the key vault. Yeah, um, the storage account uh, which is described in the subnet, it is part of uh, not part of the subnet, but we will also create a storage account um, since the app service will use that storage account uh, to store some files. Yeah, uh, the overall process is like um, uh, when developer uh, do some changes to the code. Uh, they raise a PR uh, to push the code to the GitHub um, and uh, the Azure pipeline will automatically will be triggered um, once uh, a PR has been approved, uh, which will deploy your resources. We're going to see that um, in, the, in the demo. Um, what tools and technology I'm using for this demo? Um, Azure DevOps, yeah. So we'll quickly have a look at the Azure DevOps as well. Um, I'm going to use Azure, um, uh, sorry, GitHub, uh, GitHub uh, to store my um, my uh, configuration files or overall the project. Um, I'm going to use Terraform uh, as an infrastructure as a code, and um, I'm using Visual Studio Code, which is my favorite tool uh, to work with the Terraform. Okay, so moving to the demo now. Um, Hey, Patrick. Uh, so if you want to bring your uh, on your screen, jump to your demo, and I'll bring it up on screen. Okay. Are you right to uh, reshare your screen, actually? Sorry, just had a little issue come through. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah, oh, I can see it. So if you just yeah. bring up your demo now on that. So Patrick, I can't see your uh, your demo yet on your on your end. Cool. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me start with Visual Studio Code. Yeah. I'm first. I'm going to show you uh, the structure of uh, the Terraform. Um, so I've got um, in the root folder. Um, you can see. Let me start with the provider. So very simple configuration file, uh, which uh, you can define, where you can define which provider you're going to use. Um, you have optionally, you can configure the features or you specify what feature you want to use. And also you can uh, store your um, subscription ID, tenant ID, client ID, and client secret, which uh, Terraform going to use to connect to your Azure subscription. But these are optional. There are other ways to do that. Uh, so this is a provider file. Now next, look at the version.tf uh, file. Very simple. Again, Terraform required provider is Azure RM. Um, and this is the source and the version. 
So I'm targeting the latest version. Um, same thing with Terraform. I'm targeting the latest version again, 1.2.7. And if you look at this code, backup.azure.rm, so backend plus, um, we talked about state files, right? Uh, for the state file, it is going to use this uh, backend configuration. Uh, it's going to, um, so for example, in my case, uh, the state file should be called as infra hyphen dev. Um, the container name is infrastructure. The storage account name is uh, this, and a resource group is uh, uh, RG hyphen Terraform. Uh, so um, as a backend service, when you run Terraform plan command, it is going to use this backend um, configuration uh, to store your state file. Yeah, so that's the version.tf. Uh, now let's move to variable.tf, right? Now, in my case, I want I have defined a few variables. So for example, resource group name, location, virtual network name, um, data subnet, right? So you define all your variables in the variable.tf. I also use another variable, which uh, variable.tf file only for uh, key vault because I didn't want to combine and uh, combine uh, key vault into the main variable file. So I created separate um, separate variable file. Now, uh, the actual values for those variables will be defined in TFS. So you can see uh, this is the resource group name I want to uh, I want to create. This is the location, UK South, uh, the VNet name, and all the variable names you define over here. Yeah. Um, so we looked at a provider, we looked at all other files. Now let, let's look at the main.tf. And this is the entry point of your Terraform. So when you run Terraform plan or Terraform apply, the main.tf is your entry point where it would start executing your code. Um, using main.tf, you can create new resources uh, and you can also call modules from here. So if you have defined your code into separate modules, uh, you can call them from here as well. So in my case, I'm using both. I'm creating some resources directly from the main.tf. Uh, for example, I'm creating resource group and storage account uh, from here. Uh, but for virtual network, uh, I'm uh, calling a module called um, um, virtual network and the source is uh, module networking. And you can see uh, I have a subfolder module and uh, there is a networking folder. So I'm going to talk about the module uh, a bit um, later, but let's see the structure of uh, this. Um, how do you call the, the module? So when you define a module um, in your main.tf with the source, um, these are the parameters you are passing to the modules from your main.tf. Um, now, uh, I'm calling another module here, very similar structure. Uh, I'm also using some um, random password generation um, because I want to use uh, this ad uh, Postgres administrative password, um, randomly generated password uh, to configure uh, uh, the Postgres uh, uh, configuration. Uh, for example, I want to create username and password two or three username and password, one for admin user, one for system user. You could do that here. Um, and um, the main module I have is, uh, um, you can look virtual network, key vault, web app, and Postgres. Um, and also I'm creating two uh, key vault secret. Uh, so to store the username and password, right? Um, the web app will actually uh, connect to Postgres using these key vault variables. Yeah. Now let's look at the simple um, uh, module here. I'm not going to have the, the, the code I've written here is very, very simple. So it, uh, it, this particular repository is publicly available and the link is in the description of the YouTube video. So you can go and have a look at it. You can clone it and uh, you can provision your resources on your target. Yeah, so um, I'm into the module called web app, right? Uh, again, you use the same structure here. So you use main.tf, output.tf, and variable.tf, yeah? Uh, let me go to the networking. Same, main.tf, 
output and variable. So let's look at uh, variable. Uh, so uh, from the main.tf, when you call a module, these are the required variable you need to uh, get it from. Yeah. Um, so when you call this module from the main, um, the main, mo main module will pass this parameter uh, to, the, uh, to the module. Um, yeah, now let's look at the main.tf. Now in the main.tf, um, you have uh, actual resource creation code here. Um, so you have Azure RM uh, underscore virtual underscore network, and this is the my name. And I'm using those variable parameter from, from the main network name, resource group name, location. Um, and also you can define whether this particular resource is dependent on some other resources. Uh, so the Terraform will actually uh, automatically sequence them uh, so that um, those resources will be created in sequence and it will not cry, uh, try to create uh, sequence uh, uh, resources in parallel, which can, which might give an error. So you use depends on. Uh, I'm not going to deep dive into each um, uh, resource uh, uh, parameters, but you can look at the Terraform documentation. It is quite um, uh, simple to understand what are the different parameters you can use. Um, so I'm creating virtual network, subnet, and under subnet. So one public subnet, second a data subnet, which is private subnet. Yeah, um, output .tf, uh, output .tf, um, because, um, output.tf, because I want to pass uh, the subnet IDs and virtual network IDs to the main module. Uh, I have defined three variable here. Um, since I will be using Vnet ID uh, in my main module uh, to associate app, um, uh, the Postgres database and web app uh, to those Vnet. Yeah. Um, okay, now, so this is the, the, these are the configuration file we were looking at uh, for the Terraform. Uh, let's look at the actual pipeline, um, the Azure pipeline, yeah. The Azure pipeline, I'm using here YAML here, and I'm, I've got um, stages. Uh, so I've got um, five stages, um, installation, so installation is basically you need to install Terraform on the build server. So if you're using hosted build server, uh, it, you're going to deploy. First, you're going to install the Terraform. Um, once Terraform is installed, the next thing you're going to do is initialize. So in the initialization, you, you will use um, uh, different tasks. For example, first you will copy all the files from your repository uh, into the local um, or hosted build server, uh, then you will publish those artifacts into the staging. Uh, then you will define, uh, you will call Terraform init. Now Terraform init is, uh, is a command which will initialize your Terraform. You cannot run Terraform plan until you to initialize that. You, until you initialize that, right? Now, if you look at uh, the, the parameter for this command, you have a provider, command and these are the backend services. So it's going to use the, the particular resource group, the storage account and the Terraform uh, file. And after you do the initialization, uh, you can run Terraform validate command. The Terraform validate command will validate your configuration file. And any error, any issues is, is going to report you and it won't be able to apply those changes until the validation passes, right? So validation is very important. You can't run uh, your apply without, uh, or even plan. You can't run Terraform plan without uh, doing the validation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I have separate validation as well here. I want to call twice so that, um, uh, I think this validation is for installation and this validation is for the overall configuration file. And this is the plan, right? And the plan, it is very similar, uh, a Terraform plan and the command is plan. Uh, you can pass a different variable uh, where you want to plan and, but yeah, this is a plan and then this is apply. Yeah. Um, now let me take you to the Azure. Um, so here you can see, 
location oh, i'm going to filter so that you will see less yeah so you can see here um, i've got um, eight resource groups right um, and also i've got uh, rg terraform and rg terraform i've got this container um, its name is infrastructure and in there are no uh, files but the tf state file will be created here yeah so this is the i'm going to show you the live demo i'm going to run the pipeline and we will see how the resources are, will be uh, created um, now if you look at uh, uh, the pipeline, right? Uh, this is my pipeline. Um, and uh, this pipeline has got the same YAML file, which I'm using installation, init, validate, plan, and apply, right? And and each stage, um, it will uh, do, um, it will create resources. And I'll, I'll show you how exactly it works. So let me first do some changes. Uh, I'm not going to do any changes in the code. Possibly I'll do some changes in um, here. Uh, some documentation. Yeah. And I'm going to push my code. So once it is, once the code is um, pushed in, you can see the, um, the pipeline has been triggered and uh, pipeline is right now in the installation stage. So it's, it's going to take eight to 10 minutes to complete um, this pipeline. So meanwhile, we can, um, um, yeah, so uh, take, I mean, if you have any questions, uh, meanwhile, uh, yep. yeah. yeah, so the first thing we want to ask is, whilst this is deploying, we've got, um, we're using Azure DevOps, we're using Visual Studio Code, these are all Microsoft sort of services. Terraform is, is owned by HashCorp. So the first question really is, what are Microsoft's commitments to Terraform? Okay, that's, that's a great question, um, Jake. Uh, Microsoft, He's been committed to support the open source, right? And um, uh, Microsoft, uh, as a, from the Microsoft, we are releasing uh, updates to the provider every two weeks. Every two weeks, we are basically uh, uh, deploying the new releases uh, to the production. Yeah. Um, can you share the deck? Uh, I want to show them. Uh, uh, a slide which I have in my appendix. Uh, is it possible? So I'm sharing the, the deck at the moment. Is it a particular slide? Yeah. Okay, this, yeah, but yeah, so Terra, Microsoft has been committed to, to Terraform as an open source and we are releasing provider every uh, two weeks, which means when a new feature is launched, within two weeks you will be able to you will be able to use um, uh, Terraform to deploy those resources. So we have we have great support for the Microsoft for the Terraform from the Microsoft perspective. Brilliant. Okay, so the other question that we wanted to touch on is obviously you've got Terraform, but you've got some other infrastructure code options as well. So things like uh, Bicep, ARM. Um, so really, what are the differences between, uh, for example, Bicep and Terraform? Okay, there's another great question today. The main difference is uh, the multi-cloud. Otherwise, both the languages are very, very similar. Um, uh, the way Bicep works is quite similar. The language, uh, Bicep language is very, very simple. Uh, but Bicep is uh, only for Azure cloud. Uh, Bicep doesn't support uh, other public clouds. Um, that's the only difference between Terraform and Bicep. Uh, yeah, um, it uh, so Bicep is uh, Microsoft own product, um, and um, uh, if you if you're working only on Azure um, uh, resource or if you're working only on Azure Cloud, 
or bicep is a good good fit there. Okay. And the other thing we wanted to, to know as well, so using Azure DevOps for right now, but would you be able to, for example, uh, join up your Terraform deployment with something like GitHub Actions? Yes, yeah. So you can use Terraform with um, GitHub Actions. Uh, it has got great support um, for the GitHub uh, Action as well. Uh, I have personally used um, Terraform with GitHub Action for one or two projects, uh, and it is quite similar. Uh, the way you work with Azure DevOps is quite similar. I mean, it, it has got great support. Uh, as a provider, you can look at what kind of, uh, and again, uh, the GitHub uh, Actions um, with the Terraform, um, they're, they're releasing new features every two weeks. So yeah, you can use uh, GitHub Action with Terraform. And uh, the beauty of um, the Terraform is, um, is multi-cloud and multi-platform, right? You can it supports multiple platforms, so yeah, you can use that. Yeah, and I guess it's it's quite a seamless process, right? If you've got, for example, your repo sitting within a, a GitHub uh, repo, and any kind of changes you make to that, and you push, and then probably make the changes, have your GitHub action configured like an on push from a particular branch as well to trigger your whole uh, pipeline as well. I'm guessing. That's right. That's that's perfectly. I mean, if you're using GitHub repository, definitely it is. It's good to use GitHub Action, and if you are familiar with Terraform, um, you can um, you can use Terraform um, within the GitHub Action. Uh, and also, if, if you are using multi-cloud, uh, so nowadays every company comes, now every company strategy is to use multi-cloud. So of course, yeah, there's a, another big advantage. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes. How, how are we doing on on that deployment so far? Oh, yeah, time for a few more questions. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going great. I can start showing. Uh, what exactly does uh, output of each action or each stage in the job. Now let's look at the installation. Uh, you can see uh, install. Um, so Terraform has been installed. Um, this is the version I was targeting, Terraform version 1.2, and it is on Linux uh, AMD 60, right? Um, similarly, if I go to initialization, um, I can show you all the files which I copied, for example, I had my ASP.NET core code, which I wanted to copy and build. So I did that. Uh, Terraform init. This is the command which will initialize your uh, backend. So you can see Terraform has been successfully initialized. So that's the initialization stage. Uh, next is validation stage. Very important. And uh, let me have a look. Now you can see the, the configuration is valid. If there is any issue with your configuration, it is going to highlight over here and it's going to tell you what exactly the issue is and is the pipeline will fail. So the validation command is over here in the next stage um, and then planning. Yeah, I want to show you uh, the Terraform plan output. Now is the execution plan is huge because I'm using a lot of resources, but you can see um, what exactly it's going to do. So. Uh, Terraform will perform following following actions. So you uh, have this resource that will be created. Then another resource will be created. So you can see all the resources. It's a huge uh, plan. Um, but if you go all the bottom, you can see 19 services or 19 resources to add, zero to change, and zero to destroy. Right. And so that. Um, detail you get here. For example, uh, you wanted to modify any uh, existing resource, um, the Terraform state file will track it and it would notify you saying this particular resource will going to be modified by maybe this property, right? So you, you have this Terraform plan, uh, execution plan in detail. Yeah, uh, the last phase, which is, which is actually um, applying those and you can see how exactly it has been doing, right? So you can see um, it takes like eight to 10 minutes, but um, you can see it is creating all the resources and you can see the output. Uh, if I switch to Azure and let's look at uh, the resource group. Yeah, so my resource group is over here now and um, you can see all the resources which are created. So I've got app service, um, I have got um, uh, the app service plan, uh, the key vault. So if I go to key vault um, and if I go to secret, uh, I can see uh, two secrets, um, uh, Postgres admin user and password. And if I go in here, I can see the 
with the value of this right um, likewise key vault i have got other uh, services uh, for example postgres database uh, which is um, this is the server name the admin user um, and it will also create a database for me right so now let's look at the security of this uh, so deny any public access it won't uh, allow you to direct connect from internet uh, it is going to create uh, a, a vnet rule so that only web app can again create um, so let's look at the plan ah so the plan failed uh, and i think the resource id uh, already exist maybe the key vault was already existing but uh, yeah this is how you get uh, the result so um, since the since possibly i was uh, i was using different name last time in the state file uh, but yeah this is how you you see here and if i go back to the terraform uh, resource group and if i go into uh, container and infrastructure you can see that state file yeah um, and if i run, rerun the app um, rerun the pipeline it is going to refer to this state file uh, to track all the changes so the state files is, is located here but yeah you you see this um, uh, this terraform um, code uh, and the and the different stages and how it actually uh, gives you detail around what resources been created what are where where the failure was so exactly um, you will get everything on this stage file uh, with everything documented so uh, so this is azure devops you can see all the pipeline output here i have another pipeline uh, which i used um, um, yeah and you can see same stages um, yeah so i think uh, this is all from the demo uh, i want to switch back to the presentation um, there you go we're back on on the slides for you okay um now um we were talking about i have got a few slide on the appendix um the number one is bicep versus terraform so you can see the difference between those two um so bicep is not multi-cloud whereas terraform is multi-cloud bicep terraform both easy to read easy to write uh, bicep is not yet available for um, uh, on-prem yeah maybe in future but um, uh, bicep is again vendor specific Terraform is not. Uh, so these are the differences between um, Terraform and uh, Bicep. Yeah. Um, that's it from my side. Um, Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Pathik. Um, so we've got just a few minutes to do some, some Q&A style thing. Obviously, brilliant. Thanks for showing us that live demo. I guess that's always the, the one thing with doing live demos is sometimes you come across errors, but maybe that's just a good example of error validation within DevOps and, and pipelines. So yeah, thanks for showing that. And for everyone who would like to recreate this or go down a similar kind of learning path, and if you check out the description of the YouTube live stream and, and then obviously the YouTube video that will get posted after this, is that you can re reach out and go and find Pathic's GitHub repo with all of the information and the details that Pathic has gone through today. And you can replicate that yourself in your in your own environments. So Annika, I'm gonna hand over to you. You're gonna got us some questions from the chat. We have so many questions today, so... Um... Yeah, I'll start off quickly. Yeah. So um, Satish says, can we use single build and multi-release for Terraform? Basically intention for a use plan or file from build step and release step to make sure that the changes are immutable. Okay, let me understand. Yeah, so uh, multi-release, I, I believe if I understand correctly, uh, single build with multiple releases means you want to deploy it on dev as well as on test, as well as on prod, let's say, or maybe pre-prod, right? Uh, yes, you can do that. Uh, you can, uh, the, the way I was uh, creating those stages, uh, you can target each stage uh, to a, a, a specific environment or specific release. So you can have um, uh, a stage uh, to release uh, to do a release one, and uh, let's say stage two to do the release two. So using the same Terraform uh, plant, 
uh, you can apply uh, to multiple releases. Yes, possible. Okay. Interesting. Um, I have a few more. I don't know if you've answered these already, but um, can we create our own Azure module in Terraform? Uh, what do you mean by own Azure module? So um, the Azure RM is basically a provider, not a module. Uh, the module is for your own configuration files. Um, there is no Azure module available in Terraform. It is Azure provider. Makes sense. Um, Ty, do you know if there's any other questions that we can... Yeah, uh, so I think one of them that I'd like to mention, for example, is it possible to configure managed identity uh, in Terraform? And that was asked by Ajmal. Yeah, hi, Ajmal. Uh, is managed identity is possible to configure in Terraform? Uh, what kind of, I mean, do you want to connect to a particular uh, provider or, um, or do you want to deploy a managed identity? Um, I have to look at it. What exactly the question? Maybe we, if we. Uh, so Ajmal, if you can um, put this question on a GitHub repo, we can go into more detail and see what exactly you are talking about, and I can provide you more detail on this. Cool. And then another one. For example, I saw you've got a um, a web app that you deployed in your demo, Pathic. Well, if you've already got resource existing, so in your case, you just started from fresh. But if you've got resources existing, like a web app, for example, yeah. can you use Terraform again to deploy uh, to things that already exist? Yes. Uh, it, Terraform provides a very good feature wherein you can import your existing resources into your configuration file using a simple uh, command called data, a data parameter. So you can specify data and the, the service name and the name of the resource uh, to bring your existing resources into your own configuration file and store them in a, uh, in your um, uh, um, uh, configuration file. And then when you create web app, you can refer to that existing store, uh, existing resource. So what Terraform will do is uh, when you import your existing resources into a configuration file, it is going to get you the grid of that resource so that you can refer them into the uh, another resource creation. Brilliant. And um, then, oh, sorry, just on, one more thing. Um, Ashwini also asked um, to not delete the video, and I just wanted to mention that all the videos are saved on our YouTube, um, so you can always go back to them. There are also um, links on Twitch and um, Learn TV, etc. So yeah, you can always go back on YouTube and look at them there. Great. Thanks, Annika. Uh, last question from from my end. I just want to bring this one up. So. The question is, why should I use modules rather than using a resource in Terraform? And it says, for example, in, in Kubernetes, I saw people using modules to create Kubernetes. Do you have a take on that, Pathak? So, OK, just uh, I, um, I think um, um, social, are you getting confused between the module and the provider? Because Kubernetes is uh, basically is a provider. Right, uh, modules are for your own configuration file where you can define. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, um, you can use Kubernetes as a provider within your Terraform. Okay. So, in the interest of time, I think we're going to end it there on on the Q and A. Thanks everyone so much for sending in all of your questions, Pathic. Massive thank you again for delivering that session and, and doing the demo. So if anyone has any questions as well, we've got that GitHub that people can go to and ask questions on there. Or likewise, you can reach out to us at lunchbytes at microsoft.com. So once again, Pathak, thanks again thank for you delivering that session. Thank you very much. Sure. Cheers. OK, so we're going to jump into the developer news radar just for a few minutes uh, to round off today's session. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the general availability of Azure Functions extension for the event grid blob, uh, blob trigger. So essentially, this handles events raised uh, raised to you by a storage account in Azure Blob for your functions. So it allows you to reduce the latency of your events in an event subscription to the same blob container. So essentially, it uses event grid to forward changes in the blob container as events for your function to then consume. So in the past, the earlier versions of blob storage, 
trigger for Azure Functions actually it pulled the container for updates. So this often meant that it resulted in a slightly delayed execution uh, for your Blob event. So if you imagine a file lands in, in Blob, then actually unless the, the polling of that event from the function happened pretty much simultaneously when it arrived, then you won't get that instant event trigger. Uh, but now you can. So one of the ways to, to try this out is to go and test locally within Visual Studio Code and start using uh, the different bindings uh, for event grid and the functions with event blob. So the next thing we'll talk about is public preview of app configuration references for app service and, and Azure Functions. So it's now app service and Azure Functions now support referencing uh, configuration key values from Azure App Configuration Service. So app configuration provides central management of configuration key values that can span resources and deployment environments. So when you define an application setting or connection string within app service and Azure Functions, instead of providing that direct value, you can now specify a key value in an external Azure App Configuration Store. So the app uses its managed identity to resolve the value from the store and expose it as an environment variable to your application. So this initial preview, it doesn't yet include support for network restricted configuration stores or for resolution of configuration store references to key fault uh, that'll be coming in the future, but reference key values are not yet refreshed automatically as well. So if you've got a new value, it'll only be pulled in when the app restarts on, on app functions or yeah, an app service or functions. And that's the result of another config change, such as modifying an app setting or things like that. And the last thing to do with Azure Functions is public preview of Node.js 18 in Azure Functions. So if there's some features you want to try out then, then it's now in public preview that you can have a go and explore. So the next few topics I'm going to talk about, I'm going to start with uh, Azure Static Web Apps. So this is one of the favorite services of us at Lunch Bytes, and now it's got the general availability of enterprise grade edge for Azure Static Web Apps. So what this means is that it enables faster page loading, enhanced security, and optimized reliability for your global applications. Essentially, enterprise edge, uh, enterprise grade edge combines the capabilities of Azure Static Web Apps, uh, Azure Front Door and Azure Content Delivery Network into a single secure cloud CDN platform. So some of the key features include like a global presence in over 118 edge locations. You've got caching assets at the edge. You can be proactive protection against DDoS attacks and also native support of end-to-end -end IPv6 connectivity and HTTP2 protocol. So it's really good for your static web apps if you've got a need to really make them a lot quicker um, and optimize for a user base, then this is a good thing to try out. Now, the other thing I want to mention is general availability of API management custom widget support in the developer portal. So API management now supports custom widgets in developer portal. So essentially it makes it easier to integrate with external systems and they provide a different way to represent data um, in the developer portal. So what this release does is it also enhances the custom widget development by providing scaffolding code in Vue, React, uh, native TypeScript, as well as an open source NPM package, uh, removing the need to write code from scratch. And so supporting these capabilities in the managed developer portal, it means that it provides you with an alternative to maintaining your self-hosted portals while offering a bit more of an advanced extensibility option and better manageability and secure control than available previously through like the custom HTML widget and things like that. And then lastly on this side is the general availability of the way to authenticate to service bus using managed identity. So stream analytics now allows you to use managed identities as an authentication mode when connecting to Azure service bus queues and topics. Now, very quickly, the last thing to mention on this side is the GitHub updates. And so we've got, in terms of the GitHub side, we've got actions introducing essentially new larger GitHub hosted runners, and this is coming as beta. And so this is a way for you to take uh, your runners now from two to 64 cores to give you much better performance when you need it. You can increase the, the runner size as as simple as changing a line in your workflow file. Essentially allows you to speed up and make it really easy to, to build really large builds essentially. Um, so it allows also concurrencies of up to 500 parallel machines. And so you can register now uh, for that public beta and then also GitHub Universe 2022. So register for this. This is the 9th and 10th of November. It's out in San Francisco, but also virtual. And so and I'm running out of time here. So Steph, I'm going to hand back to you. And that's, that's the link to register as well for GitHub Universe.
Thanks, Tyke. That was a lot of great information. Uh, we also have some other really cool upcoming events. We have the Azure Adventure Days, which is next week. It's actually fully booked, but you can still get in onto the develop the DevOps open hack that we have next week. Uh, so spaces are still available. So definitely go check those out. Reach out to your account team about those. And then next, oops, sorry, there's a little bit of sound in the background, is we have a few other events going on. So we have, well, Azure Adventure Days. Um, we have another one coming up to Edinburgh, the 7th of October. We have Open Hack Containers also going up to Edinburgh, uh, the 8th through the 10th. So if you'd like more of that uh, three-day event, it's Open Hacks. If you want more of a one-day event, it's uh, the Azure Adventure Day. And then we also have a serverless Open Hack, November 29th. And we have a DevOps Open Hack, December 6th through the 8th. So we have a whole slew of things coming down the pipeline, but we want you to know as soon as possible so you can start planning on either coming in person or if you need a virtual event. So very excited for those things. And again, if you need any um, topics that you want covered, any people that we want to have brought in, uh, you can check us out at lunchbites at microsoft.com. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot, Steph. Those are brilliant announcements. Hopefully, we'll see a few of you down at the Microsoft Reactor in person as well. Um, but if not, we'll hopefully catch you again in two weeks' time. So we've actually got the Vincent Ruiz doing a session on identity and integration. So previously, we've done some fusion development things with API management, but hopefully we're going to look at more of like OAuth 2.0 in identity in integration. So join us in two weeks' time, September the 21st, again at 12 p.m. British summertime. Thanks again, and see you soon.